Hello folks, tonight I am capturing the Bubble Nebula and I'm continuing that approach where I've been recapturing everything I captured last year with my SCT and it, just to see how they stack up against each other for better or worse last year I actually had a top pick with my SCT version of the Bubble Nebula so I'll see if I can measure up to that. It, it won't be as big as last year. I, I had more focal length with the SCT. But um, I'm doing um, four minute exposures with HA at gain 139 offset 21. The mean readout is 952. And I got up to a late start today because it was raining all day long. But it looks clear now and it's supposed to be clear the rest of the night. And let's take a look at what one raw image looks like. And uh, that's pretty good for, for one raw image. I, I like when I can see the whole bubble in a single raw image, so it should come in pretty strong. Now, I've already captured um, about seven hours of HA probably a few weeks ago at three minutes per exposure. So, but it, it still looked a little grainy to me because most of that time was capturing it when it was low to the north. But now it's a little higher. Maybe the data will come out better. I don't know. But I'm going to go one more night of HA before I move on to oxygen and sulfur. So I'll be back. So guiding is looking pretty good, but I am pointing north. So this is probably as good as I can get. I just cleared it out, but it'll probably average in the 0.4 or 0.5 range. So um, yeah, that's all I've got to share for this. All good so far. It just jumped 0.55. Come on, back down. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I am done collecting data, and before I start, I want to give a shout out to my friend Doug. His image of SH2115 and SH2112 is going to be in the October issue of Sky and Telescope magazine. He did a great job on this image, it's amazing. And I never submit to Sky and Telescope, but I think since Doug has done it, I think I'm going to have to start. Now I'm jealous. I want to be in that magazine, too. And I, I can't let Doug have something that I don't, you know? That's what friends do. We follow each other. <laughs> All right, let's get back to my stuff. Okay, now there's one more thing I wanted to show you before we start looking at my bubble data. I went back and I reprocessed my Lagoon Nebula. This is what I did the first time, but something was bugging me. The core just didn't look right, and I went back and I restarted it, and this is what I came up with the second time. And I posted both of these in Facebook, and it seemed it was about 50-50 as to which one people liked. I was surprised a lot of people still liked the one on the right. Now, I think the one on the right probably is a little more detailed, but the one on the left, to me, maybe looks a little more like a photograph. I, I, something about this looks like it, it, it came out of a comic book. I don't know. Um, so, I mean, there, there, there are some parts of this on the one on the right I like, but I would have to go with the one on the left. And the thing I did differently is, before I combine the data, I pumped up the curves on my oxygen data, so I made it brighter, and then I combined my data, and it really gave the the nebula a whole different look. And I was surprised at what a radical difference it was. But um, it, this one on the left actually became a top pick in Astrobin, which which is actually getting harder to do. So many people now are producing really good images. It's hard to sort of squeeze in and still get recognized, but that's okay, man. Everyone's improving. That's a good thing. So, uh, okay, let's start looking at my bubble data. Okay, so I ended up capturing over 20 hours of data on the bubble nebula. I've got over 10 hours of HA, and this is after a, a stack and a line, and this is how my oxygen looked. That's after five hours of data. And I always, like I say, I always have that brightness around the edges. But after I run a dynamic background extraction and an automatic background extraction, it kind of evens out the whole background. So I went with this one on the left. And 
that was five hours and this is another five hours of sulfur so this is the data I had to work with and let me show you what my combine looks like now I only ran one combine usually I try um, different versions and see what I can come up with trying different techniques with the combine but I settled on the first one because this is pretty much what I expected I also rotated it and let me show you now I didn't have to do a whole lot to this I used photo I, I took it into Photoshop I kind of converted the, this yellow into a more orangey kind of look that's kind of what I like and I made this cyan a little more blue and okay cover your eyes you, you might need sunglasses because this next what I'm going to show you now is kind of bright Ta -da! <laughs> did I overdo it you know if you had seen this without first looking at the combine you would say oh that looks pretty good but after seeing it you say Chuck you, you, you really pumped up the saturation too much and the vibrance but did I make the same mistake that I made with the Lagoon? Does it look like it came out of a comic strip? Does it not look natural anymore? I don't know. You know, I've already put it in Astro Bin, but, you know, while I'm working on it, it seems pretty good. But then after I, when I make these videos and I go back to look at where I started from with the combine on the left, I look, oh wow, it really came a long way. Did I overdo it? For now, I'm sticking with it. I, I like it, but if I ever get bored on a rainy day, maybe I'll give it another go and take it from a different different angle and, and see how it looks. But we'll see. And okay, now let me show you how the, the SET version looked last year that I worked on. And it's surprisingly similar, I guess, you know, when the same person, you know updates it and works on it, it's probably going to look very close to the same. And so that's my SCT version. And the one on the left actually became a top pick um, on Astro Bin. So I'd say it's, 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 it's very close. I can't pick a clear winner. What do you think? Maybe you can. Maybe you'd say, oh, maybe you like the one on the left. Hmm. I don't know. It's a tough call. Now, which means uh, it's surprisingly, I'm surprised at how well my SCP version stacks up with my refractor. But of course, if I wanted to go edge to edge, if I have a large nebula, then forget it. That, that's where the SCT starts to fail because the stars around the edge really, on my SCT, really look bad and elongated. Now, the one on the right with the refractor, it was my choice to crop it and bring the, the, the bubble in closer. But on the, the left, of course, I had no choice. I had to crop it because the stars look so bad beyond this point. So that, that's just a weakness with my SCT. Maybe somebody else has figured out how to fix that with the next star A to C. I never did. So, so but if, if you just want to capture a small object and, and crop real close into it, the SCT, in my view, looks pretty dang good. The stars are round and and, and that's that. So that's what I came up with this year. And maybe at some point I'll come back and, and have another go at the processing. But for now, I think it looks pretty good. And I'm sticking with it. All right, folks. That's all I've got. Thanks for listening, and I will see you later.